Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Santa's Game. We're here today in Path of Exile, and we are on the first big boss of the second half of the uh, game. Chevron, I think. Uh, she resurrects Brutus. We gotta fight him again. Basically, just the same point in progression as in Act 1, you know, except for now we're in Act 6. Uh, our resistances got lowered pretty massively when we completed the previous set of acts. I'm working on getting those back up, um, but we are at 50, 66, and 55, so a little bit under the resistance cap at the moment, which means we are a little bit squishy. We do have a little bit of an ice shield to help us out, but it's not quite enough. Our decoy totem does a lot of work for us, though, as well. Drop down ice shield, drop down decoy totem. Playing beat on that. Another decoy totem. Oh, we don't have one up yet. Bang. That's weird. Look at that. I didn't realize that his uh, his armor like glows as Sin comes down to take out his soul. Or is that, I think that might be a glitch. I don't think it's supposed to be stuck like that. That's funny. Crab battle. So courageous. Crab battle. crab battles. Avoid the waves. Okay. Get my totem keys. Good job. Thank you. Keep being distracted, please. Thank you. Easy peasy. Until we dive into the water accidentally. Uh -huh. I'm recording, honey. I'm talking to the computer. You're okay. Oh, that uh, whirlwind effect is quite damaging. Or whirl water effect, I guess, as it were. Let's go ahead and throw down another decoy totem and just take out that crab. Almost got him. Got him. Yay, I did it. Time to kill an evil engineer. Creepy mechanical spider, check! Other creepy thing, check? Like a scorpion or something? know what that is. It looks like they turned his spine into a scorpion stinger. That's uh, pretty messed up. And he's down. Nice. Black Venom. We did it.
That's weird. through secret passage Keep this one I usually die on Get in there. That's our garb. Turn away the tyrant's face and kingdom end without. That's a tier above what I'm using. Oh, I'm using way better. Okay. Uh, we have, since the last time we cut in, we did uh, cruelty in combination with brutality now to support and sanguinate. Because um, brutality does um, extra physical damage and then cruelty adds additional damage over time and since the damage over time on Insanguinate is physical I think those two will combo together nicely. That is a giant freaking moose bear. What the? Why is... Why, why is it a moose mixed with a bear though? Why can't it just be one or the other? Why does it have to be both? Bruxel, the mother of despair. That is an appropriate name. Oh god. Something hit me real hard there. Alright. He's down though. Take his souls then. Thus I release you from motherhood's rage. Good job. Remember, he did the thing. Humanity needs us. Uh, yeah, I like the idea of reducing physical damage taken. Sounds good. So the thing is, I'm going to have to eventually decide whether I want to do Reap or Insanguinate. Or if I really want to do both, because I'm assuming I won't be able to do Spell Slinger the entire time. Just doing a little bit of research into it, it seems like Spell Slinger falls off in damage around yellow maps. Um, so that means we'll have to go into self cath at that point. At which point, I don't know if it's worth it to do both Reap and Insanguinate. Also, the latter is hard for me to pronounce, so, you know, there's that. Um, but the bigger issue is I just thinking about, like, how to scale it. Being able to have more auras to support one or the other might be the better way to go. It'd be kind of nice if I could use the Insanguinate as a debuff to apply like damage multipliers and then the reap to like blow them up. That might be an option, I suppose. Hmm. I'm also wondering like how far does uh reap chain or not reap and sanguinate how far does it chain? Because with the chain support it does seem like it has decent chaining. But is there a way to like make it chain further? I know you can make like arc lightning chain off the screen. So is there a way to do that with Insanguinate? If so, that could be pretty strong. Especially if we could like throw it on a totem or something. So it just quickly chain casts it. And we don't have to worry about it. We just like drop it down and forget about it. That might be a way to go as well. Hmm. Not quite sure, honestly. Just trying to think ahead of like what we might want to ultimately end up doing here. Oh man, we're going so deep underground. It's getting spooky. It's getting scary. It's getting spooky and scary. So many spiders. So much cringe. It's 
spiders and these creepy little scorpion things. Can I not have but a moment's respite? No, no respite. We are almost to the boss, and then we'll be done with this silly, silly app that I don't really like. Here we go. Now she is a bit annoying. You may notice that I have 14 unspent skill points down here, and that's because we're going to do the second lab pretty soon, and I want to use most of those points on the other side of the uh, skill tree. The template I'm following has some invested in cluster jewels, but the cluster jewels are pretty expensive for what I can afford. I only have like 40 chaos at the moment, and that's only because I got one lucky cluster jewel drop, but there's no way I could afford the cluster jewels he's using. So... So we're going to go more budget, focus on the raw stats of the talent tree first, and then go back and fill in the cluster jewels if we get some economy rolling. I like that that's so much easier to see now than it was before. Bye, Silk. Yeah, it's kind of badass how Insanguinate leaves blood trails on the ground. I dig that. Giant spider down. All right, cool. Is the true climax of perverted lust. Many an artist of it. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and do the cruel labyrinth. Now we are slightly over leveled, but not really because we're missing 14 passive points. So we're actually going to be a little underpowered for this. But we're going to go and give it a try anyway, because that's that's what we need to hit our power spike. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, let's see what we're we doing on time. 13 minutes. We'll probably just do the boss fights. OK, switch up a few things in my layout. We got a new helmet. We chanced it and got a nice little upgrade there. So now we are defense capped, over capped, actually. Um, and we're using Onslaught temporarily because I don't have enough dexterity to use um, Swift Reflection or Chain in combination with Ensanguinate, Spell Slinger, and Efficacy. And then with Reap, we are using Cruelty, Brutality, and Spell Slinger. Uh, we have Frost Shield as an option to throw down randomly to try to help ourselves survive. Probably won't really use it, um, but I mean, it's something. Yeah. 20% damage dealt to your state of frost shield before your life. Yeah, it's something. Probably be too busy running around trying to stay alive, though. I don't even have enough mana to cast it. My reserve is so high. I reactivated Herald of Ash because we had just enough to do that. So far, we're doing okay. Alright. The first phase is pretty easy. Hopefully, next phase is just as easy.
Okay. <clears throat> Part two. See how this one goes. Alright. Uh, okay. We have conduits. I think that's what those are called, right? Conduit of flames. Try as much as possible to make him focus on my totem so he doesn't focus on me. Seems to be working. Got it. All right. Let's clean up his uh, leftovers. Sweet. Uh, let's see what the helmet is. It's a lot of lightning resistance, but our current one is definitely better. All right. All right, last one. Looks like he's gonna have lieutenants with him. And convo to storms. Okay. Oh god. It's like a trap filled hellhole. I do not like this. We got him. That was actually surprisingly pretty easy. He's going to kill his lieutenant here. There we go. And... Treasure keys. Mini treasure keys. I'm going to look over his loot real quick. Okay, let's see if any of that's been all good. Eh, not really. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, I think it's actually worse than what we currently have, though, because what we currently have is really, really good. So, all right. So, now we drop stuff off in my dump chest. And we have four labyrinth keys, it looks like. Nice. Now let's just go and use them. Wait, that treasure chest dropped two more treasure chest keys. Where are the odds of that? That's cool. I guess that's all of it. <laughs> Is that all? Jeez. A lot of stuff. Uh, let's see, what's the trick? There. Right, I'm going to be picking this stuff up for a little bit. Alrighty. Fire resistant. Uh, fire resistance cold. Nothing all that amazing here so far. 30% movement speed is a lot. Uh, that might be worth because we're over capped on uh, resistances as it is. Let's see. Yeah, 30% movement speed over 20%. Sure, why not? I'll take it. Nice. All right. And most importantly, we now have access to the uh, Witch Ascendancy. Oh, nice. Okay. I didn't realize I was only one away. Sweet. Uh, what was the other point I was supposed to put in? So we either go up to Necromancer... Uh, I don't really understand why he would grab that. There's got to be a good reason, though. Going over to Path of the Witch. Wait. Wait. I can't get there yet? 
I have to go all the way over here before I have to... Oh, come on. You're killing me here. Oh, my God. I still have to get one more to get to that. Ugh. Painful. I thought because I was in the Witch Ascendancy area, I had the starting point, but I have to get all the way over to there. Oh, man. Wait. No, it's up here, isn't it? Man, I just pulled 16 ability points for no reason. I don't know where to put it over here, though, because as far as the passive tree that I'm following goes, um, I've done... I've done what, I, what I'm supposed to do. Like... It's filled out. As much as it's supposed to be filled out, other than the cluster jewels I can't afford, I guess I have to invest in cluster jewels I can't afford. Oh, man. Okay, well, I'll figure that out in between episodes then, I guess. But, dang, that's a little anticlimactic. All right, well, let's see what we get for our divine font. Okay, now we have two choices. Okay, I see how it goes. Edict of Force. I don't know what that actually does, though. Can I... I can't, like, shift hover to find out what it is, huh? Add 16 to 24 cold damage if you've been hit recently. Okay. Edict of Force. I mean, it sounds kind of cool. Would it get rid of my fire resistance enchant, though? Nope. Alright. Hopefully it's good. We'll see. Oh, well, anyway, uh, that'll be it for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, the format of kind of just running through doing the bosses, getting updates on significant build changes, that kind of thing. Again, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I'll probably finish out leveling in this method, um, doing like 20 minutes per episode. I think that's fairly good. Um, anyway, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and hope to see you guys next time. And now I got to figure out what to do with all these skill points. Oh, my God.